All right, so to help you with the whole okay. friction idea, let's say that I have a ram and I've set a wooden box on this ram. Let's say that wooden box has a mass equal to 22.76 kilograms. All right? This box is on an incline at an angle of 57 degrees. And what do you want to go for? I'll let you choose. You want to find the coefficient of static friction? Or you want to find? I don't even care. Whatever you think would be best. Let's do this. This is a good question. If I'm applying a force that is equal to 171.63 newtons. Here's your question. Is the box moving? Did you say it's this is a static problem? Yeah. What's well, not in it because then it's in stationary position, right? Static friction deals with an object that's not moving. We're on window. Okay, I'm asking you if the box is moving. Okay, this is the part where you like slow down. All right, I give you the following information, and let's give you the kinetic friction coefficient equal to zero point two one three. And static friction coefficient equal to. At this time, when a electric screw 10 forward, this is going 0.36. I think that's all we need. All right. For sure, yeah, you got everything you need for this. You need to know if the box is moving. So, this is the thing. Look at your static friction formula. So the force of static friction is less than or equal to coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So if you looked at this at a free body diagram, I'm pushing the box with a force of 171.63 newtons. Back away from the point that I'm pushing is friction. In this case, I'm wondering if the box is moving. Look at your force of kinetic friction equation. What is the difference in here? And by the difference, I'm not talking of these sides. What's the one thing that's different? The kinetic coefficient and the static coefficient. Which one of these is greater? Static. It's the greater one. So if we were looking at this circumstance, do I even care about kinetic friction? No. No, because which one of these values is going to be greater? The coefficient, uh, force of static friction or the force of kinetic friction? Static, static friction. So you don't even care about kinetic. So you never need this information. You never need to know that the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.213. You're wanting to know if the thing's moving. So back here you have a force of static friction. And you're wanting to see if that's going to overcome. Now you have a coefficient of static friction. 
and you have uh, you can find the normal force so we can solve for that but this is the thing I want to make for sure you got with the thought process behind it if this force being applied is not greater than this force of static friction is the box moving no. why is it no because it's not strong enough to even match the force that the box has pushing out. So it cannot move it. Who said it can't move? Yeah. It's static. So static means it's not moving. So if we were doing kinetic, it could. Yes. Okay. If it wasn't in motion, though, it'd be equal in kinetic. But this is the thing: is I'm asking you, is the box moving? We're going to find out. You're going to find out, but you have to solve this information. Where does gravity get at on these? I forgot. This is where gravity is going to come in at because that's the next thing we're going for. Bless you. Where is gravity? Gravity points straight down, right? It's her. Yeah. Okay. Or is this a triangle, Mr. Hall? Where's gravity? That's not going to be a right triangle. Not yet. Normal force. The other one. Because Where's the normal force? It goes right over the top of the box. It's not straight up. Perpendicular to the perpendicular to the uh, surface. Perpendicular to the surface. That's why I did this. There's normal force. Now you're going to start wanting to solve for some stuff. You need to find what the normal force is equal to. What is the normal force equal to? Negative. Negative force of gravity in the y direction. Why? Why? Why was it not that before when we were there? You're on a ramp. Life's changed. Here's your axis. Here's your right triangle. Horrible box. So on here you have force of gravity y component and you have force of gravity x component. The force of gravity is also adding a force in the x direction. So in this case, this force applied doesn't have to only overcome this this uh, static coefficient force. It also has to come over overcome that force of gravity in the x direction. So do you add those? Yeah, you add those. Too. So we're going to need to pull these together. So let's get our triangle. This one. All right. Can you find the force of gravity? Absolutely. The force of gravity is equal to mass times gravity, and I gave you a mass of uh, somewhere 22.76 kilograms. As times gravity, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. That looks like a good slice of pizza. Why is that gravity negative? You could make it negative. <laughs> So negative 9.81 equals negative 223.2756 newtons. So here's my right angle. Here's my hypotenuse. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I think it's your right angle. <laughs> I solve things. Yes. How? Uh, we can find. Give me a second. I'm sure we can. It's a piece of information I haven't gave you. Sits right here. What? If this was flat on the ground, the axis would be sitting here. Yeah. But as I lift it up, this angle 
we're going to call theta. You probably cannot see that because let's be real, I'm not an art teacher. It's in the third quadrant. It's in the third quadrant. Okay, and look at that. I could do some math. Okay, that theta is equal to this angle. So theta equals 57 degrees. I don't even know if that's in the shot. That was, uh, there we go. All right. Here's the diagram we've drawn. Okay. Force kinetic friction. Now we force can slide. solve. Now we can solve. Why? Because I got this angle up here. Now this is where a lot of y'all made mistakes because you did an angle like this. Fifty-seven. How do you get that? 57, yeah, my bad. Oh, no. I don't know why 3 was in there. Okay, 57 degrees. Alright, so we got the force. I gotta look at this for a minute. This is a force of gravity, Y component. This is force of gravity, X component. Ooh. Now you do some math. So you can do the sine of a 57 degrees is equal to, look at your angle, opposite, so the force of gravity, x component, divided by 223.2756 newtons, force of gravity, x component equals 223.2756 newtons times sine of 57 degrees. It's a triangle. You're finding length. Is there any such thing as negative length? Like when? Five, six times the sine of 57 degrees. So this is equal 187.2547 newtons. There's the force of the X component, so we're going to do cosine 57 degrees equal to force of gravity Y component divided by 223.2756 newtons. Do what? Force gravity, Y component is equal to 223.2756 newtons times cosine of 57 degrees. Which is equal to One hundred twenty one point six zero four six newtons. All right. In this case, is when you're not dealing with the triangle, are these negative? Yes. Why are they negative? They're going in negative directions. The right positive, up positive. Okay, now what can I add information wise? Normal force. <laughs> you brainwashed us all. We're all dead. Y'all still on the mic wheel? Um, Trying to get the haze out. <laughs> normal force is equal to the opposite of the force of gravity in the Y component, so the normal force is equal to 121.6046 newtons. Now, I can solve for force of static friction. This is why I need sliding boards. I just slide things. I feel like you would be the only one that's not really cool people that can use multiple computers at once. I'd love to. That'd be cool. 
So, force of static friction is less than or equal to static friction coefficient, which is 0 0.364. I gave you that. I have to give you that. Times normal force, which is 121.16. No, 60. 60. <laughs> Less than equal to forty four point two six four one Wait a sec. What uh, you gotta add your S G of A, right? We're getting ready to get there. Because now, Going in a negative direction. We're not in the triangle now. <laughs> we're back over here in the problem. I don't think the box is moving, Mr. Hall. You don't know? Okay. This box moved. What all forces are going in the X direction? Uh, S, G of X. FG of X. Yep. We're gonna circle it in purple because it's important. It's hard. What else? Uh, F M S. <laughs> F sub nu S. What else? No. Force applied, which is the one hundred seventy-one point six three newtons. So, for so this box to move. That red line has to be stronger than the other dotted two. line and the blue line. So, other way of saying it is net force in the x direction is equal to the summation of all the forces in the x direction. So, I have force applied as positive 171 point 63. I was making sure. <laughs> Put those ones right there with that decimal and throws me off. Plus. Plus. Negative. Negative forty four point two six four one forty four point two six four one newtons plus plus negative one eighty seven negative one eighty seven two two five four seven point two five four seven newtons yes so if this net force is negative it's not moving. So, I'm pretty, I'm this box is not moving, Mr. Hawk. Don't tell me until I get all my calculator because I'm very curious. Okay. And I want to say I don't know. What? 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 We'll be back in a minute and give you an answer, YouTube. Chloe needs time to punch in her calculator. That's it from the get-go. This box is not moving. Did I do something wrong? No, it's probably me. I, I, I did not get that. I didn't either. I didn't know. Yeah. Eight, eight, yeah. Eight, eight, eight. Yeah, that's eight. what I got. You probably messed up on your decimal. Yes. Oh, I punched the key didn't punch in right. You were talking smack about me. Yeah, you were talking smack about me. more time to put it in. Let's hit it accurately. Hold on, YouTube. Well, Mr. Hall gets the correct answer. <laughs> 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 and then it's like Mr. Johnson's when he can come back and make a different outfit. <laughs> he has a different outfit like every 10 minutes. That was really a whole season piled into one episode. <laughs> Alright, he pulls negative 59.88. Hey, hey. Is the box moving? No. No, no the box is not moving. 
What else would I have to add? You would have to add greater than that. I'd have to add a force upon what I've already applied be 59.8889 newtons for the box to or start. Or above. Gosh, imagine how slow that would be with the nine and the motor. That took a whole page. Could we figure that out, Mr. Hall? Hmm? How slow the box would be moving if we put the nine at the end of that? <laughs> Alright, 